This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures, and paints, discount prices at miniaturemarket.com. Hello everybody, welcome to Painting 101. Now, we've been through paints, brushes, primer, uh, 102, well that's a whole advanced thing we're going to be talking about airbrushes very soon. But I think usually those are the first thing, three things that you really need to get started. But there's other things that you really need and we're going to go take a look at those down on the table and kind of fill in all the stuff that you can really use and really will help you in painting your first miniatures and, 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 and as you are starting to grow a, a bit after getting your paints and your brushes all set and getting a feel for it. There's a few other things that you really need to start off with. So let's head down to the now table. Here at Painting 101, we have spent time at nauseam talking about brushes and paints. Not today. Today we're going to be talking about different things. And usually they come in my little happy emoji bag of painting. And these are the things that I always feel that besides paints and brushes that you really, really need. Now, what I like to do is I always like to point out some of the other things that aren't in the bag. First of all, I always have sandpaper because you're always wanting to take the edge off things. After you glue um, a model together, sometimes there's some clippings that might be, or, or edges that might be a little rough. So sandpaper comes in handy. Now here we have a figure and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Now inside this bag, I usually like to keep um, some of the things that I use. This is uh, something that's a little newer to help me uh, paint, especially when we are painting online. Um, this actually goes inside here, like so. And then you can squeeze this and you can paint. As you can see, it has a nice end to it and it's going to be great for camera work. But most of all, it's going to give you a lot of control because you're not just holding the little base there. You can also tack it onto things and uh, onto bottles. People like to tack it onto bottles and stuff like that. But um, I'd rather just have something cool like this, which I really like. The next thing we're going to talk about is green stuff. Sometimes when you glue joints together, like in their arms and stuff like that, sometimes there will be some space. You just take a little bit of the yellow and the blue and you mix it together. We're going to have a whole thing about green stuff because there's so many different types of it. Uh, GW Citadel makes some. Uh, you can get this stuff, which is the mold it together and make it turn green stuff. And Vallejo and everybody else has a whole bunch of stuff. And like I said, we have... Uh, I usually keep a smaller piece of, of sandpaper. Glue. Glue is the question that I'm always asked about. Well, when you are using glue, you want to use a, a really good, I like the gel. And as you can see, the Ultra Gel just gives me a lot of control and is not running all over the place if I squeeze it too hard. A pair of good clippers are always important to get as close as you can to keep you from having spend a lot of time filing and things and like if that. you don't get close enough well that's what this little guy's for a good metal file I like to have one to kind of get under certain areas and be able to just um, really get those burrs off that we really want to get a pair of nail clippers sometimes you can't get these into certain areas and sometimes just a pair of nail clippers will make a difference even when you're cleaning up a figure some of the bigger figures it, it really helps out and of course a pair of tweezers uh, you can always use a pair of tweezers for uh, when you're gluing something maybe you have a small part that has to go in there and if you have big hands like mine obviously a pair of tweezers would work a lot better now Another additional thing is brush cleaner. You don't really need it for cheaper brushes, but if you have some very exp expensive brushes, sometimes getting a brush cleaner uh, conditioner which uh, for your higher end brushes to make sure that you really get all the paint out so you don't have that thing where the, the brush spreads apart. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Of course, you have to be able to see the model. 
and a good headset is always uh, handy. I like to use a headset. Uh, frees up my hand. Doesn't it? Doesn't um, it frees up my motion and how I want to paint? But uh, some people really enjoy something like this, and sometimes I like to use this as well because that really helps. So these are all additional things that are really going to help you take it to a next level. Being able to see the model makes the model bigger so you can paint on it. Having good control and good clean edges and, and joints filled uh, properly and good glue is the basis for good solid painting. Just basic, basic things help make a difference to really bring out your figures. So let's head up on top and get my final thoughts on Painting 101 this week. So there you have it. You can see the importance of, of a good set of clippers, files, um, uh, tweezers a lot of time, and a good glue. Good glue is very important. Um, and, and of course green stuff there's so many variances to that and just making sure that your model is completely put together the way you want it to be and and having something to hold the model too really helps so I hope this helps and we'll be talking more about each individual piece as we go on on painting 101 but that's it for this week so until next time I'm Rob Bourne for painting 101 we'll see you very very soon